Good morning. So our topic for today is uh, biological control. So this is the lesson number nine in hydrophonics uh, topic. First and foremost, uh, the learning objectives of this topics are number one, explain what is biological control. Number two, discuss the importance of biological control. Number three, identify different garden pests and their bio biological controls. And number four, identify the different beneficial insects. Many gardeners and consumers are concerned with the quality, purity, and safety of the food they eat. With soils becoming tainted and water sources polluted, it is a valid concern in the farming industry. Use of pesticides and herbicides has grown for years as farmers have attempted to control the pests and weeds that challenge their crops. With consumers demanding safer produce, there has recently been an active movement away from excessive pesticide use. One way to achieve this is by the use of biological pest control rather than chemical pest controls. Biological controls consist of insects, mites, and microorganisms, which is um, natural enemies, which keep pests under control. Many commercial hydrophonic growers who produce their crops within a controlled environment greenhouse exclusively use biological controls for problem pests. When bringing biological controls or beneficial insects into the greenhouse, a natural balance can be achieved. It is possible to control pests in an open field with biological means, but it is not as effective as within a greenhouse or other closed environment. Virtually, all insects have a predator or enemy, and that is what makes biological control work. There are insectaries, or what we call facilities that raise insects throughout the U.S. and worldwide. That breed and sell beneficial insects, and these beneficials are shipped as egg, larvae or adults and are usually sent overnight to the user who quickly distributes them to the problem areas. In the world of beneficial insects, there are predators and parasites and the predators would actually consume the pest insects uh, such as a lacewing is a good example of a predator. Lacewing is welcome in most gardens because they are known for their voracious appetite and broad diet of various insects. A parasite is an insect that lays its egg within the egg sac of another insect, displacing or consuming the eggs that were there and the larvae that emerge from the egg sac are those of the parasites, not its victim. Let's talk about now the garden pest and their biological control. The first garden pest is what we call white fly. A white fly are an extreme problem for greenhouse growers, field or charred um, crop farmers and home gardeners. The white fly sucks larvae, quantities of sap from the plant and secretes the sugar as honeydew. This makes the leaves sticky and susceptible to fungal growth and not rot. In a serious infestation, the fungus and rot associated with the honeydew can kill an entire crop in the matter of weeks. In addition, white fly can pose a great threat to plant health because they are able to transmit many plant viruses. A white fly also looks like a small white moth, one, eight, one eight in length. They rest on plant leaves and will quickly fly away when disturbed. 
white fly lay their eggs on the underside of a leaf. Shiny sticky leaves are signs of white fly presence. Biological control when you experience white fly uh, is the Incarcia formosa. This tiny parasitic wasp lays its egg in the larvae of the white fly. Parasitize or parasitize larvae turn black and are easily recognized. Adult in incarcial formosa also feed on honeydew and the body fluids of white fly larvae. Next, garden pest is what we call trips. Trips are found in crops all over the world. Crops are attacked by a number of species of these small winged insects. Larvae and adult insects feed on all above ground parts of the plant and as a result, the tissue dies, loss of chlorophyll reduces yield, serious attacks may result in desiccation of leaves and damage to flowers and fruits. Trips can also transmit plant diseases. Due to their small size, the damaged trips do is usually spotted before the trips are noticed. Damage appears as a small yellow speckles on the leaves later followed by a silvery sheen on leaf surfaces. The trips feed by scrapping the tender leaves with most damage occurring on new growth. They are only one and 12 centimeter long, but can move very quickly Adults look similar to a small worm with wings. Trips can also carry and transmit plant diseases. To control trips, we use Amblyshus cucumiris and Aureus levigatus. Amblyshus cucumiris is an effective predator of young trip larvae. Aureus levigatus, another predator, is often applied in conjunctions with amblyshus because they kill adults and larger larval stages of trips. The next garden pest is what we call aphids. Aphids inflict serious damage in various crops and their reproductive capacity is enormous. The damage they cause is due to secreted honeydew, resulting in contamination of fruit. Aphids are also notorious for carrying viruses. Aphids are slow-moving insects inhabiting the undersides of leaves. They establish dense colonies of tiny, 1 and 32 centimeter to 1 8 centimeter uh, is the size of aphids. Soft-bodied, pear-shaped insects that are light green, pink, yellow, brown, or black in color. To control aphids using biological control, we use Apidius colimani and Avidoletis apidimiza. So the parasitic wasps, which is called Apidius colimani, is particularly effective against some species of aphids. Parasitize aphids from characteristic white mummies. Apidoletis apidimiza is effective on a wide range of aphid species and lays its egg in aphid colonies. The orange larvae that hatch from these eggs feed voraciously on aphids. Next garden pest is what we call red spider mites. Red spider mites are a pest of nearly all horticultural crops, which is both in greenhouses and outdoors. Their tremendous reproductive capacity means that these mites are capable of rapidly destroying your plants. The larvae, the nymph, and the adult mites all cause damage to the plant by feeding on plant tissue. Red spider mites are about the size of a pinhead, inhabit the underside of plant, and can be seen scurrying around. Their eggs can be seen with a magnifier scattered at random and ranging in color from clear to tan with large infestation. 
A fine webbing can be seen covering the plant top. Red spider mites prefer lower humidity levels and normally go dormant in winter. To control the red spider mite, um, we use Phytocholus persimelis, which is this predatory mite feeds on eggs, nymphs, and adults of a number of species of red spider mite. Phytocholus persimelis responds to specific chemical cues when locating its prey. This makes it effective in locating new red spider mites colonies. The next garden pest is what we call the leaf miner. So leaf miner are a major problem for many crops. The larvae form tunnels in the leaves of the plant. This may lead to desiccation and early leaf loss. The loss of chlorophyll may result in severe reductions in yield. Leaf miner adults are small black and yellow flies. Leaf miner eggs are inserted in leaves and the larvae feed between leaf surfaces, creating a um, meandering a track of ore mine at high population levels. Entire leaves may be um, covered with these tracks. Mature uh, larvae leave the tracks, dropping the ground to pupate and this life cycle takes only two weeks in warm weather. To control this problem, we use the Snusa siberica and the Diglipus isaia. So these parasitic wasps lay their eggs in or near leaf miner larvae. The young parasite larvae hatch from these eggs and begin to feed on their host. Internally, if the nusa and extreme externally, if diglipus eventually a new parasite adult emerges to continue the work of its um, predecessors. The next is what we call the beet army worm. The beet army worm is a major pest or fresh market at tomato. Each larvae uh, damage um, severe fruit leaving shallow gorges that make the fruit unmarketable. Nearly hatch larvae feed together near the um, the uh, egg cluster. To control this problem. We use hyposoter exig exige, and this parasitic wasps um, is natural enemy of beet army worms. It also attacks tomato fruit worms and cabbage loopers. The hyposoter exigua usually kills the larvae in the third instars and uh, generally has its greatest impact early in the season. So we are done with the different uh, garden pests and then how to control it by means of biological control. So there are also other beneficial uh, insects that we that uh, we can use to control this garden pest. So two other insects that are always considered beneficial are ladybugs and lacewing. So both are predators known for their voracious appetite and broad diet of insects. Both of these predators will help control almost every pest insect that we have discussed with the exclusion of the beet army worm. So both the ladybug and the lacewing actively feed and consume problem pests in the larval stages or stage as well as the adult stage. So the ladybug and the lacewings are a welcome addition to any garden or farm or greenhouse. There are also other safe options to control pest. Con um, pest. Uh, if we can't find a way to have a biological control or to apply biological control. So occasionally or additional means of control will be necessary. And fortunately, there are other safe options for pest con control. So we can use insect insecticidal soap. So when you say insecticidal soap, it, this is an environmentally sound method of getting rid of pest insects, which is uh, basically a soap solution that when you spray directly on the insect will smoother them. It does not larvae or leave a residue and crops sprayed with insecticide, insect 
insecticidal soap can be harvested the same day. As a general rule, insecticidal soap will not harm most beneficial insects. So insecticidal soap is available as a spray or in a concentrate form to be mixed with the water. For best result, use of fend or purified water if you are mixing it from the concentrate. The next one is by means of uh, making a sticky strip. So when you say sticky strips, it provides a safe method of trapping insects. The insects are attracted to the bright color of the sticky strip and once they land, the, they are stuck. When the strips are full, simply this card and replace with a new ones. Normally, uh, the color or we used um, sticky strip with a yellow color. So many commercial growers use sticky strips for monitoring uh, what insects are in the greenhouse. By checking the sticky strips on a regular basis, the grower knows what the insects are present and whether or not the population is growing. Next is what we call the botanical spray. So when you say botanical spray, these are made from plants that have insect Insecticidal qualities such as neem tree. So these products are generally safer than chemical insecticides, but even though they are natural, they are insecticides and should only be used as a last resort. Remember, grow your vegetable hydroponically and organically. So stay healthy, helpful, and calm. Thank you.